Gopi Jana Vallava Giri Bharadhari Gopi Jana Vallava Giri Bharadhari Gopi Jana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Bana Chari Yamuna Tira Bana Chari Jaya Radha Mata Kunja Vyari Jaya Radha Mata Kunja Vyari Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Badan Hari Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Badan Hari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Takoti Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Subhadra Baladeva Ki Jai Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Jai Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Gora Premanande Supadaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Sarasati Devi 
Gauravani Pracharine Nivishesha Shunyavani Paschatya Deshatarine Mancha Kalpatrubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasari Gauravakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Om Namo Bhagavate, Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Deving Saraswati Vyasa Tato Jayamudiraye Nashta Prayeshvabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Mavati Naishtiki We're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. How fortunate we are. Canto 5, Chapter 1 the activities of Maharaj Priyavrata. Priyavrata. What would what would the word the name Priyavrata mean, do you suppose? Anyone anyone want to guess? Votes? <laughs> Vows. Vows. <laughs> yes, or we might say one, because it's name of a person, it's one whose vow is dear or is pleasing. One whose vow is pleasing. So, but we might ask, what vow are we talking about here? <laughs> um, so, anyway, let's... Let's read verse number 17, shall we? Does anyone want to remind us something from verse 16? Some, anyone who was listening yesterday to the class? I wasn't here. On Saturday. On Saturday. Oh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Well, just to, as they say in India, prime the pump, um, let's first read the translation of verse 16. Even if one is liberated, he nevertheless accepts the body he has received according to his past karma. 
Without misconceptions, however, he regards his enjoyment and suffering due to that karma the way an, an awakened person regards a dream he, he had while sleeping. He thus remains steadfast and never works to achieve another material body under the influence of the three modes of material nature. So there's an analogy being given, comes so many times in the Bhagavatam, the waking versus sleeping and dreaming condition. And here it's interesting because it's telling of someone who has awakened after a dream and realizes, oh, that was just a dream. And because one recognizes it was just a dream, one doesn't take it seriously. Were any of you dreaming this last night? Yes? <laughs> Are you taking seriously the dream that you had? Do you remember anything from your dream? You don't have to confess. <laughs> We wake up and we understand, oh, that madness, and it's usually some sort of strangeness, right? With me, it's some strangeness. Um, oh, that was just a dream. Whew, good. Uh, and we dismiss it. It's finished. Back to real life. So that's the attitude being described here of the, uh, the person who's liberated. It's a, so it's a comparison. Just as we have this, compar this experience, in a similar way, the liberated person experiences this body and it's what it's going through. Okay. <clears throat> so, shall we chant this verse of uh, today, 17? Why not? By young Pramatasya Vaneshva Pisyat. Hmm, let's try that again. By young Pramatasya Vaneshva Pisyat. Yata Saaste Sahashat Sapatna. Yata saaste sahashat sapatna. Yata saaste sahashat sapatna. yasyat marater buddhasya. Jitendri yasyat marater buddhasya. Rihashramakim nu karotya vadyam. Rihashramakim nu karotya vadyam. Rihashramakim nu karotya vadyam. Others? By young Pramatasya Vanesh Vapisyat Yata Saaste Sahashat Sapatna Yatendriya Syatma Brater Buddhasya Rihashama Kim Nu Karotya Vadyam Bayang Brahmatasya Vanishva Pisya Bayang Brahmatasya Vanishva Pisya 
Very nice. What does it mean? <laughs> Bayam. What does Bayam mean? Yes. Pramatasya. Of one who is bewildered. Vaneshu. In forests. Api. Even. Syat. There must be. Yata. Because. Sa, he, one who is not self-controlled. Aste, is existing. Sa, with. Shatsapatna, six co-wives. Jitta, in, jitta Indriyasya for one who has already conquered the senses. Atmarate self-satisfied. Buddhasya for such a learned man. Griha Ashama Household life. Kim, what? New, indeed. Karoti, can do. Abadyam, harm. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Translation, even if he goes from forest to forest. One who is not self-controlled must always fear material bondage because he is living with six co-wives, the mind and knowledge acquiring senses. Even householder life, however, cannot harm a self-satisfied learned man who has conquered his senses. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Purport, Srila Narottam Das Thakur has sung, Griheva vonete take, ha goranga bole dake. Whether one is situated in the forest or at home, if he is engaged in the devotional service of Lord Chaitanya, he is a liberated person. Grihe va vonete take. Take means to stay, right? Staying, living. Ha goranga bole dake. If he calls out goranga. <clears throat> If he calls ha Goranga. If he is engaged in the devotional service of Lord Chaitanya, he is a liberated person. Here, this is also repeated. For one who has not controlled his senses, going to the forest to become a so-called yogi is meaningless. Because his uncontrolled mind and senses are going with him, he cannot achieve anything even by giving up household life and staying in the forest. 
<laughs> so one may think now I'm renouncing everything I can't take it anymore <clears throat> mm. I'm I'm getting off of this world go to the forest but what is what's going to what's actually going to happen he or she will take his mind and senses with them problem will not go away because his uncontrolled mind and senses are going with him he cannot achieve anything even by giving up household life and staying in the forest formerly many mercantile men from the up country of India used to go to Bengal and thus there is a familiar saying quote if you go to Bengal your fortune will go with you unquote <laughs> up country I presume means northern India and presumably he's Referring mercantile men means vaishas, means business people. So apparently there was some idea, I will go to Bengal and there I will get rich. Why particularly they would get rich in Bengal? Doesn't say. But if you go to Bengal, your fortune will go with you. <laughs> you won't be successful because you have your fate our first concern, therefore, should be to control the senses. And since the senses cannot be controlled unless engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, our most important duty is to engage the senses in devotional service. Rishi Kena, Rishi Kesha, Sevanam Bhaktir Uchate. Bhakti means engagement of the purified senses in the service of the Lord. Who knows that whole, that whole verse? Sarvo bhadi vinir muktam, nirmalam, vishkesa, sevanam. We got it. Herein, Lord Brahma indicates that instead of going to the forest with uncontrolled senses, it is better and more secure to engage the senses in the service of the Lord. Even household life can do no harm to a self-controlled person acting in this way. Uh, it cannot force him into material bondage. Srila Rupa Goswami has further enunciated this position. Iha yasya Harer dasye karmana manasa gira nikilas nikilasu nikilas vapi avastasu jivan mukta sauchate. Regardless, translation, regardless of one's circumstances. <clears throat> If one fully engages his activities, mind and words, karmana, manasa, gira, in the devotional service of the Lord, he should be understood to be a liberated person. Jivan Mukta. Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur was a responsible officer and a householder, yet his service to the cause of expanding the mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is unique. Srila Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati Thakur says, Durdan tendriya kala sarpa patali protkata dangstrayate. The sense organs are certainly our greatest enemy, and they are therefore compared to. venomous serpents. However, if a venomous serpent is bereft of its poison fangs, it is no longer fearful. 
Similarly, if the senses are engaged in the service of the Lord, there is no need to fear their activities. The devotees in the Krishna consciousness movement move within this material world. It's the Christian consciousness movement, and we move. <laughs> but where do we move? In the material world. <clears throat> but because their senses are fully engaged in the service of the Lord, they are always aloof from the material world. They are always living in a transcendental position. And so ends Prophet's purport. Srila Prabhupada always spoke very positively and hopefully and optimistically <coughs> about his followers. <laughs> so they're always completely controlled. <laughs> so uh, the verse again, by young Pramatasya Vanish Fapisya Yatasa Aste Sahashat Sapatna. Chitendriyas yatma rater buddhasya grihashrama King nu karotyavadyam Even if he goes from forest to forest, one who is not self-controlled must always fear material bondage because he is living with six co-wives, the mind and knowledge-acquiring senses. Even householder life, however, cannot harm a self-satisfied learned man who has conquered the senses. What is the context of this verse? Let's first uh, work on that. As I understand, as I recall from briefly rereading, Lord Brahma is convincing his grandson Priyavrata, he whose vow is pleasing, <laughs> Priyavrata, he is uh, convincing him to do what he was not expecting to do. He was expecting to give up everything and, as one would say in general, go to the forest. And he's being called, no, no, you have a job to do. Uh, you should take responsibility in this world. And basically saying, don't worry. You thinking, you know, I need to get away from worldly activities uh, because they, uh, they will pull me away from, from spiritual uh, realization. They will drag me down and I will become... Uh, fallen, a fallen soul, I will be harmed, avadyam. Uh, and so his fear, bayam, uh, is that. And, and this verse is a reassurance, it seems to me, essentially, uh, a reassurance to him. No, it's okay, you can be in this world, be a householder, be a griha, be one whose ashrama is, gri is griha, uh, the acceptance of the house. Prabhupada once said, anyone who lives in a house is a grihasta. <laughs> griha means house, and grihasta means situated in the house. So we may be wearing different clothes, but we're all living in houses. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a reassurance, and it's, uh, it's given in, as best I can understand, a rhetorical question form. Kim nu karoti avadyam. What can happen to, what, what can he do uh, that would cause his fall down? Uh, this, uh, He's suggesting that Priyavrata uh, is Jitendriya and Atmarati. It's interesting, actually, both these terms are 
sort of uh, in one compound, jitendriyasyatmarater. Not in one compound, but they're adjacent. Uh, this is this uh, this sya ending, and also the e r, which is e h, and then it becomes r because of Sandhi rule. Uh, this is the genitive form. So of of one whose indriyas, whose senses are jitta. Jitta means controlled. Actually, it means conquered. One whose senses are conquered. And atma rati, which becomes atma ratehe uh, in the genitive. Atma rati. Rati, what does rati mean? Hmm? Attachment, uh, attraction, yes. So one who is attached, attracted to the atma, to the self, um, is one whose senses are are controlled. Or you can put it the other way around. One whose senses are controlled has to be one who is attracted to atma. And the word atma is always... Uh, it's always quite ambiguous. Uh, it can mean the soul, it can mean the body, it can mean the mind, and it can mean the soul, the individual soul, or it could mean also paramatma in many contexts. And in Sanskrit language, you don't have uh, lowercase and uppercase letters like we have in, in English, also in German. Uh, you don't have lowercase, uppercase. We have in many of the translations, uppercase, atma, the self, uh, capital S. But it's just, um, you don't know, actually. <laughs> so there's ambiguity, and I think it can be a kind of intentional ambiguity. So atma rati could also mean attraction to the Supreme Self, to Paramatma. And that's really the point that uh, the verse and Prabhupada's purport is making. It's, it's about attraction to, specifically through the engagement of the senses uh, to the Lord. He's saying there's no question of controlling the senses unless there's engagement in uh, the service of the Lord of the senses, which in Sanskrit is what? Rishikesha, yes. Rishi, Rishika Isha, the Lord of the Rishikas. <laughs> Rishikena Rishikesha. So with the Rishikas, Rishikena, doing senses, uh, sorry, it's doing service uh, to uh, the Lord of the senses. That's the process. The problem is described here in the first half of the verse. Payam pramattasya vaneshu api. So even though someone may be running, trying to run away uh, from the problem, how? By going to the forest um, and, I don't know, Hiding, <laughs> hiding in the forest. Uh, bhayam, there will be, uh, out of fear he may go, pramattasya, of the one who is pramatta, who's mad. Bhayam pramattasya vaneshvapisya yataha, uh, because of that fear. Sa aste, being sahashat sapatnaha. <laughs> he is saha together with sapatna. Mm. And sapatna means co-wives. And shat means six. Not one co-wife or two or three, but six. <laughs> and it's, there's, there's this understanding, there's, there's an implication when there's co-wives, they tend to be competing uh, with each other. And therefore, they may be 
actually enemies of each other. And so to have co-wives, to be with six co-wives means to be with six enemies. Um, not a happy situation. <laughs> We might be reminded of a verse in the 11th canto. I'm sure you've all thought of it. Bhayang dvitiya bhinivesha tasya isham ishana petasya viparyayo asmiti tanmaya yato buddha abhajetam bhaktiyaika yesham gurudeva tatma gurudeva ta atma. So bhayam. It's a, it's a very compact explanation of what our problem is in this world, by young. Uh, we experience fear. Um, when I was, I often tell this story about myself. <laughs> when I was in college as a young man, I was feeling not so very happy at all about life in general. And I was trying to analyze what is the problem, and I came to the conclusion the problem is fear, fear of death. I understood that just from my inner speculation. And I thought, how shall I overcome this fear of death? And in my um, young man logic, I thought I should do something I should face some fear, and in this way, maybe I can overcome it. So the, the th what I thought would possibly serve this purpose uh, was to uh, jump out of an airplane with a parachute. <laughs> so that's what I did. Um, to tell this story very shortly, <laughs> I realized I survived, <laughs> although on the first jump I might not have survived, but that's another story. Um, but I realized it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So I gave up that sport. <laughs> Uh, one becomes absorbed in what? In apetasya, apeta, in something else than the Lord. Ish, ishat apetasya. Viparyaya asmriti. And so because we forget, what do we forget? We forget the Lord. Have you ever had that experience? <laughs> no. We're remembering 24 hours a day, right? Tanmaya <clears throat> yato, because of maya, abhajetang. Abhajetang, but bhaktya kayesham, bhaktya, by devotion, um, to the guru. It, it says, um, who the guru who is the um, who is to be identified with the devatas with the, with the demigods so by the guidance of the guru th by the practice of bhakti um, this bhaya can be uh, we can become free from this fear we can become confident. The other example that uh, Srila Prabhupada gives here from a verse he would quote several times, Durdan tendriya kala sarpa patali protkata dung strayate. So this is Prabodhanan and Saraswati. And kaiva yam narakayate trit asapur akasha pushpayate. It begins with kaiva yam narakayate. Um, the punchline of the verse is the last line. 
uh, which is uh, how does it go? Kai Valyam Shri Shri Gauranitai Jagannath Subhadra Baladev Kijai Kai Valyam Narakayate Tridasapur Akasha Pushpayate Durdant Hendriya Kala Kar Kala Sarpa Patali Protkata Daksh Triate Vishvam Purna Sukayate Vidi Mahendras Chakitayate Yat Karunya Katakshavai Bhavatang Tam Goram Eva Stama So we offer Stama, we offer obeisance, uh, praise uh, to Goranga Mahaprabhu whose sidelong glance <laughs> Kataksha um, causes one's attitude to change. And then the rest of the verse is describing how our attitude changes. Kaivalyam Narakayate. One considers Kaivalya to be hellish. In the Yoga Sutras, it's considered the goal of life, Kaivalya. <laughs> Uh, the last uh, of the four parts of the Patanjali Yoga Sutras is uh, called the Kaivalya um, uh, Pada, the, f the section on Kaivalya. So Kaivalya, Narakayate, it's hell. No thank you. <laughs> Tridasapur Akasha Pushpayate, the um, the heavenly realms, the three realms of heaven, Akasha, Pushpa, Pushpayate, they are considered to be like the sky flowers. What are sky flowers? Imagination, it's fantasy, it doesn't exist. It's, it's insubstantial. So that's another change, or it's a related change of attitude. And then this line, Durdantendriya kala sarpa patali protkatadangstrayate. The senses uh, are like the fangs of a snake. If those fangs are broken, uh, the snake still lives, but... Uh, um, but they've been broken and therefore they're not dangerous. Pra-utkata, uh, they're broken. Pra-utkata dangstrayate. This is, it's an interesting form of Sanskrit. It's a, a dangstra means teeth or fangs and dangstrayate, <laughs> causing the teeth to be broken uh, or be, causing one to be in a condition of broken teeth, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So in other words, there's a change, a significant change. But how is the change coming? That's in, in Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur's, Thakur's verse. It's coming in such a nice, simple, sublime, effortless way, simply by the glance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by divine grace in other words now we may th we may say but um, here Prabhupada is talking or the verse is and then Prabhupada's talking about engaging in this life as a householder um, and there's a sense of of confidence that there will be no danger because of being a householder. Is that enough? We may ask. <laughs> and then the answer is no, you have to engage in service. You have to engage in devotional service. And what's the uh, sort of standard traditional devotional service for householders? Give you three guesses. Huh? Worship of the deities, yes. <laughs> I knew I would get this in somehow. <laughs> no, engaging in the service of the deities. Huh? Charity. Charity, oh. Yes, it's true. This is one of the functions of the householder indeed. 
Actually, Krishna says, yagya, dana, tapa, karma, natya, jam, karya. Uh, these three activities should not be given up. But he doesn't say by the householders. He says by anyone, everyone uh, should not give up these th three activities. But what I want to say is, uh, this suggests making endeavor, making some effort, <coughs> practicing. Rishi Kena, Rishi Kena Seva. How did the verse begin? Sarvopadi vinir muktam tatparatvena nirmalam. So sarva upadi, all of the um, upadis, all of the false designations by which we identify ourselves, vinir muktam, uh, they can be, we can be freed from them. How? Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam. That's the promise. Um, let's see, I wanted to share, where is it? Here it is. Sometimes I um, try to make some sort of exploration in what sometimes is called interreligious ideas, inter interfaith dialogue, but there's also inter there's also comparative religion and there's also comparative theology. And I just yesterday came across something which I'd like to read. It's not too long. From a, a Christian author of the 11th century. Well, it was probably written in Latin originally, so we get a translation. Uh, this is from William of St. Thierry, who wrote a short book called The Golden Epistle. Epistle means a letter, or it came to be called that. So, do you want to hear this? <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, he's continuing from an earlier discussion, but we're jumping into. He says, but no vice is natural to man. No vice, no bad activity is natural to man, to human beings. Whereas virtue is natural. Nonetheless, the force of habit deriving from a corrupt will or a deep-seated carelessness tends to make a host of vices become as natural to the conscience which has been neglected. Okay, that's a little, maybe I should unpack that. <laughs> He's saying that mm, vice is not natural, but it can become as it may seem to become natural. Why? Because of carelessness, uh, deep-seated carelessness. It makes a host uh, of vices. Um, Host means a lot, many different vices. Make a host of vices become as natural to the conscience which has been neglected. As medical men say, habit is second nature. <clears throat> so that seems to have been an old saying. He goes on to say, yet every bad spirit can be softened before it grows hard in evil. Okay, so he's, he's saying it's possible to overcome bad habits. Um, 
by practice. And even after it has become hardened, it need not be despaired of. In other words, don't give up hope just because you've got some habit which has become just as if part of your nature. Um, for the curse pronounced upon Adam, so of course he's going back to the story in uh, the, the book of Genesis of the Bible. Adam and Eve, you know, they uh, took a bite out of an apple or a pomegranate. It's debated whether it was an apple or a pomegranate. Um, and then they were cursed by God. God became angry and cursed them. And what was the curse? Now they have to toil, they have to work. For the curse pronounced upon Adam means that the earth which we cultivate and the ground which is our heart or body produce harmful or useless growth freely in all directions. But what is useful and necessary only with hard work. Okay, he's saying, he's sort of making a figurative. Out of the curse, you have to go and work the land. And uh, William of Thierry is saying, well, what we have to work is this body, uh, which grows, if we're not careful, weeds <laughs> in the form of vi vices. But, he says, we can work uh, the, the land of this body to produce the fruit which is useful. Um, by hard work. And then finally he says, however, since virtue is a product of nature, so virtue, it's, it's natural to be good, he's saying. Since virtue is a product of nature, when eventually it comes into the spirit, it, into the spirit, it comes not indeed without hard, hard work, yet as to its own proper place. And there it settles down to stay. Uh, nature is well pleased with it, for it knows no greater reward than to be aware of itself in God. Now I lost track myself. What is it? It is, uh, I guess it's spirit. Uh, no, virtue. Okay, virtue is the product of nature. So basically he's saying, <laughs> as I understand, you have to make some effort uh, to cultivate virtue. And once, when you do this, it will become natural. And when it's natural, um, then it knows no greater, virtue knows no greater reward than to be aware of itself in God. So it is a consciousness of God. It is pleased, virtue is pleased to be conscious of God. In other words, it becomes kind of self-perpetuating at some point. Um, but it, it, takes, it takes effort. Did that make any sense? Sort of, yeah. Well, maybe put in a simpler way by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> Vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehina rasavarjam rasokyasya paramdrishtva nivartate. Yes. Vishaya vinivartante refraining. <clears throat> Uh, vini vartante. It means making some effort uh, with regard to the sense objects to avoid, to be careful, to control. Um, niraharasya. 
Dehin, of one who's embodied, that's us. Rasavarjam, one gives up the, the, one may put aside the taste. Rasa api, even though there is a taste. <laughs> uh, the taste is there. One of my sannyasi god brothers was asked before he took sannyas uh, by Srila Prabhupada, uh, so um, you, uh, you are attracted to women? And my god brother, sannyas god brother, said, no, he said, you're not attracted to women? And my god brother said, I'm very attracted to women. That's why I avoid them. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, okay, you can take sannyas. <laughs> so vishaya vinivartante nirahara siddhihina rasa varjam rasa api, although uh, rasa is the param drishtva nivartate uh, because of a higher seeing, having seen something superior, param. Param can mean superior or it can mean param, the, the supreme, seeing the Lord. Uh, there's a ambiguity there also. Param drishva nivartate, then he is controlled. So, like that, no fear for such a person. Bayam uh, is not there. And Grihasta Ashram recommended, uh, yeah, Prabhupada in that famous purport in the eighth canto, where Gajendra is, you know, struggling with uh, the, uh, the crocodile who who was who who in his previous life <laughs> who who was the name <laughs> who who uh, who who was cursed <laughs> and he became a crocodile um, so he's struggling and why is why is gajendra struggling he's out of his element and in this purport Prabhupada uh, recommends that one get into one's proper ashram element for uh, fighting with maya so that one will be uh, successful in the fight. Srimad Bhagavat Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Hare Krishna Comments, questions, reflections, doubts Arguments, complaints, anyone? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. How to um, see that? Yeah, actually, we mm. have to qualify ourselves. Yeah. To enter, but then, if you're not if you're qualified, qualified, you, you know, better not. Actually. Yes. <laughs> There's a bit of a paradox there, which you have very accurately pointed to. <laughs> this the the context of the Bhagavatam, of course. If Lord Brahma tells you you should get married. Um, and you may say, no, but I have no attraction, I don't want... No, you should get married. Why? Because you should have a family. The concern here is for 
praja. It's uh, and there's uh, a f it seems like a few times in the Bhagavatam uh, that there is an issue of uh, a need for population, <laughs> and and because of that. Lord Brahma is concerned. So that's the situation here. Um, yes, Srila Prabhupada would say sometimes, mm, all the brahmacharis should stay brahmachari and all the, all the ladies uh, should get married. Go figure. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> um, so I've never had any uh, good answers for your your sort of question. My my personal answer w was not that. My mine was more like of my god brother that okay attraction is there best to avoid because I'm just too lazy to be a householder. That's the fact. It's a lot of work, which many. Brahmacharis who are planning to marry don't realize until it's too late. <laughs> you have a lot. You have a lot of responsibility and a lot of work. Um, and on top of all that work, serve Krishna. Good luck. Um, so, let's see, what can we say to this? Of course, we know the distinction between Grihasta and Grihamedi. Um, Srila Prabhupada many times recommended and which is the main to someone, to a, a male devotee, that if, if you cannot manage as um, as a brahmachari, if you cannot manage as a brahmachari, then go ahead and get married. And the idea, but then we may well ask, as you have asked, so then that means that, that it suggests that the brahmachari is not self-controlled and therefore the life as a grihasta is not going to be uh, as it should be. And we might say, indeed, that's the, uh, the unfortunate reality in more cases than we would like to admit. So how is this and what is to be done? Indeed, what is to be done? Uh, we may... Hmm, long for a culture in which there are extended families and in which uh, householders are controlled not just from within but also from without, from the society, <laughs> uh, from their extended family. Uh, I've read or heard, I think I read this, that in the extended family the system was if there is a, a quarrel between the husband and wife, then the men of the family sort of take the husband aside and coach him, and the women of the family take the wife aside and coach her. And they sort it out in that way, so that so that the marriage will continue, because <laughs> it's understood the you know the priority is this marriage has to has to continue because um, if this marriage would come apart, then it's it's tearing apart the whole family, the whole society, and that. We cannot have that. So, <laughs> in a sense, sense control goes on from within, ideally, but if not from within, it will go on one way or another from outside. 
That's also expressed, um, Prabhupada explains the word Shastra and shas, Shastra with short A uh, are related in the Sanskrit verbal uh, datu of Shas. The Shas datu means to control. And uh, so if one is not controlled by Shastra, one will be controlled by Shastra. Shastra means weapon, or more broadly, just physical force or some kind of external force. So in other words, to be a Vaishnava is to accept the, uh, the rule, the control of Shastra. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, how does he say? Na shastra vidim utsrija vartate kama karata uh, na yat syat, and I never learned the second half of the verse. <laughs> now I hear it from five corners and <laughs> I don't hear any of it. <laughs> what is it? Yes, na sid him. Na sukam. Na param gatim. Right. We got it, more or less. <laughs> yeah, so Krishna emphasizes there has to be following of Shastra. So I think um, part of the answer to your question is mm, the, has, the householder. Um, who may who may be well controlled and therefore doesn't so to say need to be a householder can be the best of householders because he and she can really do what householders are meant to do and that is care for each other and care for uh, all of those in the circle immediately around them, their own children and the greater family and the devotee family. They can take care of uh, the, the brahmacharis, the vanaprastas, the sannyasis because they're free from uh, the entanglements of the grihamedi existence. Does that uh, help? Is that go in the right direction? <laughs> you don't look very satisfied with that. <laughs> Something more? <laughs> huh? No, I want you to explain something more. Help me out here. <laughs> Now we got a microphone for you, so now you can. Sure, Prabhupada, we know um, he's speaking the truth all the time, and we also know that he, in those days, he wanted to have brahmacharis and sannyasis to spread the moment. Mm. So, um, is it like kind of change of mood that we. Now it's mainly grihastas. Yeah, but yeah. not like really grihastas. But <laughs> so. Did you hear that? <laughs> Not like really three houses. Of course there are some Truth very is bad. out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to offend anyone or whatever, but it's just uh, very... It's too late. <laughs> the truth is out. <laughs> uh, so, okay, what do you... <laughs> What's so the question is? So what no. um, should we? Uh, what should we, we should put a yeah, moratorium? Do, what on, should we um, strive for? Maybe we should put a moratorium on the grihasta ashram. <laughs> no more marriages for the next two years until we figure out what is what is the shastric what are the shastric injunctions for a grihasta. Um, what should we do, indeed? 
We should have more seminars for grihasas. We should engage them more in devotional activity, I, I would say. But how to inspire them for that, that is the question. You can't force anyone to do devotionals. You're going to do devotional service today. Uh, bye. <laughs> Away they go. So there has to be... Um, Prabhupada speaks about uh, preachers needing to inspire others, uh, to inspire people, to engage in devotional service. So that's, that is a special uh, challenge. It's one thing to make new devotees. It's another thing to keep and maintain and engage and inspire and have everyone feel, yes, I'm part of this uh, this society, this community. I want to, I want to help. I want to do service. That's the challenge. That is indeed the challenge. One thing is everyone needs to feel acknowledged. Everyone needs to feel appreciated. And uh, that's, uh, that's, that's something to practice, <laughs> to, to recognize, to acknowledge, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Marge. Um, I have a follow-up question to what you just said. Um, how to inspire devotees? Now um, we're going into uh, Ishta Goshti mode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's already the Sevak Sangha, which w I was thinking this topic uh, would be very nice for the Sevak Sangha. Uh -huh. um, yes, Keshava Maharaj, he'll have all the answers. <laughs> Um, I was just remembering one incident I had where we had some program with the larger community and it seemed to be quite inspiring program. We had some senior devotees and there was some nice guitar and after the program a few devotees they came up and told me that wow they are so inspired and from now on they will come regularly and, and then, then they didn't. Then they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> People have... S we, we homo sapiens have short memories, <laughs> especially in this age. No, go ahead. So this was a typical example of how inspiration can be uh, ignited ex from an external from some Qatar association. But then I, my question is, we also know that we, in our sadhana bhakti, we try to, by our practice, we try to cultivate the inspiration internally. And to me it seems that many in, in our community we maybe undervalue our practice sometimes, that how we should be strict about certain our practice to getting up early, even though we are living outside, chanting our rounds carefully, reading, mm. and how we can improve that also, because we know we are mostly very isolated mm. in the today's uh, circumstances. We don't have a community and live together. So if you can shed, shed some light on this. One thing I suggest is reading groups online reading groups for householders. I know one group in Sweden, <coughs> they were three devotees, um, three male householders. They would meet every morning um, for 20 minutes and read Bhagavatam. <laughs> 
And they said it was so inspiring, or it is so inspiring. And it's a very simple thing to do. Um, and uh, because it's reading Bhagavatam, or it can be another book, um, it's connecting immediately with Shastra. It's, um, it can give, I think, a very powerful charge to householders so they can, you know, put everything in perspective for the day. They would do this in the morning before, you know, before the, yeah, before their day began. So that might be something you could uh, promote. It's, I think, a practical thing because it's um, nowadays everyone is on the internet anyway, right? And it doesn't cost anything more than the internet connection, which everyone has anyway. It doesn't require more time than the time they're taking for that. It's sangha, it's connecting uh, with other devotees. And I recommend small groups. Keep it small. I think, I think maximum four in such a group is good. It can be two, it can be three, maybe four. Um, and of course there will, will be days when one or another cannot join. That's okay. I'm in a reading group. Uh, we're meeting only once a week uh, because of our different schedules because we're in three parts of the planet. Uh, or four, four parts. One is in Japan, one is in Finland, I'm in Europe mostly, and one is in America. <laughs> and uh, we're reading Bhagavatam, but we're reading uh, Sanskrit commentary of the Bhagavatam. So we're each, we're kind of working on our, these three other than me are better in Sanskrit than I am, so I'm getting most of the benefit. Uh, but uh, it's very nice, it's so sweet. We're reading Sanatan Goswami's commentary now to Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 1. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. But that's what we're doing. Um, one can just make a schedule. What it, maybe not every day, but whatever. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever. You can experiment with what works. And then there can be, I don't know, how to keep that going. There can be maybe... Uh, different ways of reporting and devotees saying, giving announcement, yes, we did it for a whole month, Haribo! I don't know. <laughs> Rewards, gold stars. When I, was, uh, when I was a kid, my brother and I would get rewards from our parents for, you know, <coughs> taking out the garbage and <laughs> washing the dishes. We would get these stars on a chart. We were so unmotivated, they had to do something. <laughs> it was terrible. When I think back on it, it was like, what is wrong with me? Why we couldn't just do some nice service to our parents? <laughs> So that's one thought that comes to mind. Maybe that's enough for today. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai Shishi Gornitai ki jai Jagannath Subhadra Baladev ki jai Srila Prabhupada ki jai Gaur Premanande Hari Krishna Kshetra Maharaj ki jai